Welcome to LinkedIn Marketing Essentials. Uh, so hope you're in the right class <laughs> to this morning. Um, so a little bit about SCORE. Always start out, obviously, this is being hosted by SCORE Santa Barbara. And I hope everybody can hear me. Can somebody just uh, raise their hand real quick? Let me know, say yes, you can. Perfect, thank you so much. I always forget to ask that. I was having technical difficulties yesterday with Zoom. Um, so a little bit about SCORE. Again, this is being hosted by SCORE Santa Barbara, and some of you may already be uh, familiar with all of the great services that all the SCORE chapters across the country offer. Um, but there are almost 300 chapters nationwide. Um, started about 50 years ago as the Service Corps of Retired Executives, otherwise known as SCORE. But they don't really emphasize that, that an acronym anymore because not all of us are retired executives, but that's how it started out. Uh, almost 10,000 volunteers nationwide, as you can see, offering all types of great services. In addition to this webinar, there's uh, webinars and now starting to be live workshops again across the country, um, free uh, mentoring in all different types of business disciplines. So if you're looking for uh, business advice in finance, marketing, sales, management, business structure, creating a business plan, uh, manufacturing, pretty much everything a, a, a but free legal advice. They can offer free mentors across the country. Um, in addition to this workshop, there are workshops in every single chapter. And if you go to the local site, if you're dialing in from the Santa Barbara area, that's uh, santabarbara.score.org, um, or go visit the national site here, score.org, to find your local chapters um, address, but visit all of them because there are a lot of great free resources to download. If you need a business plan template, you can download that. There's a ton of other templates and things to download. And there are on-demand webinars in all the chapter and live webinar calendars. So since they're mostly virtual still, you can go visit all the chapters or some of them and, and um, participate if you don't find the classes you want in your local chapter. Um, I personally do teach for about 12 or 15 score chapters across the country virtually. So um, if it's Tuesday, it must be Austin or Charlotte. <laughs> so you can find me somewhere on scores calendar teaching. Um, so a little bit of housekeeping. I am recording. I just double checked. It is recording. So um, at, after the class, you will receive the recording, the slides, as well as the content calendar that I'll talk about during the class. Um, Robin, are, is everybody hearing me? I said Robin said she's not hearing me. Is everybody else hearing me okay? Can somebody raise their hand if they're not hearing me? Or if they are, all good. Okay, so my, Robin, it might just be you. I don't know if she can hear me say that. Um, so, so I'm gonna type in Robin, uh, check your sound. There we go. Okay, thank you. Um, so again, I'm recording it. You'll get the content calendar. Uh, there is both a Q&A and a chat feature here. So if you have any specific questions, if you can put them in the Q&A box and then any comments, um, I'm going to have you start posting some stuff in the chat in a second, but any questions so I can dist distinguish them from the chat uh, going on in the chat box. So hopefully uh, all of that is clear. So on to the next slide. So a little bit about me. Some of you may have, you know, maybe not physically met me in the past couple of years, but met me in one of my um, classes, or I think I have some of my chamber clients on here I saw on the list. So um, I have been in the e-com online space um, since 1998, as you can see here, since the internet dinosaurs roamed the earth. Um, I worked for a gourmet gift basket uh, company up in the San Francisco Bay Area when I lived up there and started their e-com business. They were a traditional catalog and retailer and uh, took it to a million dollar plus um, online uh, part of their business. Um, and I have been in the wine industry for 18 years now, as of August of, of this year. So I'm always working with somebody in the wine industry, but I do have clients in all of these industries, past and present. I've worked with, uh, I have a CBD client, medical devices, restaurant, a uh, little bit of everything. Um, so I work with all types of industries. And as I mentioned, I do teach for SCORE chapters across the country, as well as other chambers and trade groups. And I am a marketing advisor for the LA Area Chamber of Commerce and their Resilient Business Program. So that is me. So hopefully everybody has their sound checked out okay, and we're ready to go here. So first thing, I'm going to have all of you do a little bit of work here first. Um, I'd love to know who's in the room. And, uh, and, and because this is LinkedIn, <laughs> you should be sharing. So what does your business do? 
and, and put it all in one chat, uh, you know, uh, chat box in there and send it. What does your business do? Who does your business help? So who's your ideal clients? And are you business to business or business to consumer or both? I'm assuming probably majority are business to business in here because it's LinkedIn, but it's okay if you're both or B2C only. So um, great. So share that. What does your business do? Who does your business help? And if you're B2C or B2B or both and type all that. And, and also if you want to put in where you're dialing in from, uh, what part of the country um, are you calling in from? That would be great. Or zooming in from, I should say. So put that all in one chat box and send that out on the chat. I'll see who's in the room. And then next, you're also going to share, because uh, it is a networking uh, platform, right? Share your profile in the chat. Uh, if you have business pages set up, go ahead and put those in the chat as well. Network with each other. You never know who's in the room, um, who you can potentially either do business with or become a new resource for you for your business. So um, I forgot to uh, copy paste mine onto into the chat, but I will make sure you get that with the um, slides and all the other assets as well. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn um, on my business or my profile. So it uh, looks like we have people are starting to fill in where they're from, what they do. So we have luxury travel advisor in North Carolina. Uh, both B2B and B2C, court appointed special advocates in Santa Barbara, musicians, all right, uh, pole and aerial dance studio, video post-production, and I think that's it so far. So keep sharing. Um, great. I teach busy women to feel body freedom via mindfulness. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah, and share. Share your LinkedIn. Get out there. So let's start here. I always share this slide in all of my classes, the world of marketing. I know it can be ever, uh, always overwhelming, <laughs> ever expanding, <laughs> confusing. Where should you go, right? What should you do? How should you market your business, right? So we have the, I call traditional or, or offline world, uh, TV, radio, print ads, billboards, PR, promotional products. Those are obviously physical, physical marketing. And then the ever expanding digital world. Right. We've had websites for a long time, Internet advertising along with that, social media, which we're talking about today, um, email marketing, search engine optimization, uh, text and Wi-Fi marketing, and then things like geofencing and retargeting advertising, social media influencers. So what do you do? Which ones do you use for your business and which ones are appropriate? you know, for where your clients hang out and your budget, right? That would be a, definitely a deciding factor here and where you go. So I always say before you go any further, you need to know exactly <laughs> where you're going before you head out, right? Just as if you're going to hop on a train or a bus to downtown, uh, wherever, wherever downtown is for you, you want to make sure you're on the right bus or train, right? You're not just going to hop on any bus or train and hopefully you get there at some point, right? That would waste probably a lot of time and maybe some money as well. So you want to have a plan in place. And as Ben Franklin says, if you fail to plan, you're already planning to fail. We don't want to do that. We don't want to be that company that kind of throws a spaghetti on the wall to see what sticks or that company that we say in marketing spray and pray, right? You fling the arrows at the bullseye and pray that you get that bullseye. And all of those other holes represent your time and money. And I know I don't like to waste either one of those. So I'm sure none of you do either. So let's not be those businesses, right? Let's have a plan in place. So I always start off with the marketing plan. We will start, start talking about LinkedIn in a minute. Uh, but before, make sure you know what you're doing and have a plan. So as I mentioned, first reason, maximizes your marketing budget and return on investment if you're in the right places, talking to the right people at the right place and right time. Right. And that, the plan helps you do that. Creates consistency. So if you do have a, any plan in place, even if it's just a content calendar to get your marketing started, it, it does help create consistency. Have it written down and encourages deeper thought about your business and marketing. So even through this crazy two and a half now years of this pandemic. Right. We've a lot of people have had to shift gears, change from teaching things live or doing their business live to going virtual, um, pivoting, reimagining, whatever we all have, pirouetting <laughs> for our businesses. Uh, but even beyond that, hopefully we're done pirouetting for for the for COVID, but um, or getting close to the end of that. But, you know, even after that, every year, reevaluate your business. How are you doing things? Are you uh, technology? Has that changed to affect how you do things? 
My restaurant client has to now have a QR code menu as well as their physical menu. Um, you know, delivery apps, you know, as well. That's a lot of things have changing in that, in that world as well. Digital menu boards, things you can't touch, right? So I had to adjust to the time. So think about, it does encourage deeper thought and making sure clients are still interested in what you do, interested in the way you're doing them. Can you do it better, stronger, faster, right? And then unifies your team. So if you have staff, you want to make sure you're always on the same page with your business, right? And business or marketing. And then just improves your chances of actually accomplishing your goals if you write them down. So um, hopefully those all make sense. I'm just kind of reading, reading through the chat here. So we have Florida, we're dialing in from everywhere, uh, serve others by pouring my 50 years of business ownership and identify strong franchise opportunities. Great. Uh, let's see, specialize in entertainment, uh, business solutions, including employee virtual cafes as employee perks. So that's very interesting. And let's see, preserved roses. I think I met you before. I remember the preserved roses last year. And let's see, we have them dialing in from anywhere, everywhere. Entre new youth empowerment services. Uh, Warrior, I know you from one of my classes uh, or my chamber program. Uh, silicon medical devices. All right. Yes, I think I've talked to you before, maybe, uh, or seen you in one of my classes. So let's see, I'm just reading a few more and then I'll continue on. Scalable Business Hub provides startups, small businesses, and nonprofits a range of custom virtual full service accounting and business. Definitely, hopefully, you have some uh, potential clients to network in here, everybody. So make sure you're sharing your LinkedIn. It might be services that you're looking for for your business people to connect with. So, um, and then somebody, will you, yes, uh, Jeffrey, the, in case you missed it, dialing in, uh, the, this is being recorded. So you'll get recording slides in the content calendar after the class. So you'll have all those resources as well after that. So marketing plan. So some of you may have attended my marketing plan class. This is not the class I'll be going into depth on this. I just always share it because I want you to think about, you know, these steps before you get to step five. That's where we're today, channels, LinkedIn, right? So I've talked to many business owners, teaching classes, and usually meet you at step five. I'm teaching social media and email and all the fun stuff, I call it. But you haven't really thought about steps one through four, right? Setting goals for what you're trying to accomplish, knowing who your customers are. That's huge. Knowing who, knowing your, your buyer personas, who, who are your customers, really helps set your business, your marketing plan in place. Because if you know who exactly you're targeting, then you'll know where to target exactly. So, and what your goals should be about around that. So definitely a very important step not to skip. Um, SWOT analysis in USB, definitely looking at your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And what is your unique selling proposition? If you have competitors out there, most of us do, you know, how are you unique against your, your competitors out there? What makes your story unique to your ideal clients? Right? And then your branding, your story, messaging, all that. How do you speak to your ideal customers? And is it the way you're speaking to them going to reach to them? Right? And then having that tactical plan in place. What do you need? Your budget, processes, people, potentially, um, all tools that you might need. And then always measuring, optimizing. So things to think about. My marketing plan 101 class, I teach it every month somewhere in this universe. <laughs> it's across the country. Multiple score chapters usually offer it. I think it's coming up on my calendar again soon, but keep checking back um, for that class. I do teach it all the time. So moving on to LinkedIn, that's why we're here. And I appreciate everybody still sharing and definitely share your LinkedIn. And if you don't have a LinkedIn, well, by the end of this class, you should. <laughs> or after this class, make sure you set up a LinkedIn. So there we go. Okay, perfect. We have a good group of people across the country. I love it. So a little bit about LinkedIn. So it is, you know, it shows on this slide, interesting enough, as of 2020, Facebook a little, a little ahead as far as B2B on the left-hand side, but on B2C, definitely Facebook is more B2C. So I always consider LinkedIn to be the best place for B2B. Uh, Facebook, you potentially can do business with, for, you know, business to business, but LinkedIn is where you want to go to really get specific when you're doing, looking for some very specific audiences, B2B or industries. So this just shows you that for business to consumer, LinkedIn is not really the place to go. Okay. Totally different market here. And a few more stats on here. So it says 51% of companies acquired a B2C customer through LinkedIn. 
Um, and 93% of B2B marketers consider LinkedIn to be the most effective site for lead generation. Okay, so overall, over, over even Facebook. Um, so a few more, 80% of LinkedIn members want to connect with companies to enhance their decision making. So I'll show you a few more. I won't read them all because you're going to get the slides on those. Read a little few things about LinkedIn. And there are 790 million um, uh, users on LinkedIn without using for ads, 800 million active users. So I think that's really the same stat there. Um, eight marketers love using it, <laughs> of course. And uh, I think where there's uh, 100, is there 50 million or 100 million companies on LinkedIn here? I'll show you that. Yeah, 55 million companies listed on the platform. A little bit more male uh, than female. And interestingly enough, I'll show you the slide on age as well. 25% are senior level influencers, so maybe executive level. Um, and then 52% of buyers list LinkedIn as the most influential channel during their research process. Not necessarily to buy t-shirts and maybe picture shows, but for products and services that they want to use for their business. And also, I, I let, looks like I left off the slide there, um, the age group. So this is an important thing compared to the other um, social media channels. It's about uh, 30, 30, 30. <laughs> so the, the larger 30-ish percent is right smack in the middle, that 30 to 49 range. So upper millennials, Gen X in that group. Um, and then 30-ish 30 30 -ish percent below that and 30-ish percent above that. But compared to the other social media channels, um, not as important. And the reason being, give you an example, I have a, I have a private client of mine. She's a 34-year-old CEO of a multi-million dollar transportation logistics business. She started it, okay? Does it matter if you're trying to reach CEOs of transportation logistics or, or CEO of a multi-million dollar company? Do you care that she's 34 versus some a CEO of the same type of company or a CEO that's 54, right? You're still trying to reach her. I'm sure you wanna do business with her. She has 70 employees. Uh, a lot of services her company needs, but does it matter her age? Not so much, right? So I don't really, I share the stats so that you know kind of the age range in there, but when it comes to reaching out to business to business compared to like, hey, if you're looking for 50 plus people, you might not be going to Instagram or Snapchat. Um, you might, if millennials, you might go on more Instagram, but for LinkedIn does not really matter as much, right? So. So um, why do you go? Why is it important to, to network on LinkedIn, right? Well, of course, find new clients, right? Maybe find new hires if you're looking to expand uh, your business. Like definitely a place that's where we probably all started on LinkedIn, right? Looking for jobs, posting up our resumes. Um, expand opportunities, just like you're doing here, right? Looking for people that could be potential resources or lead you to a potential client, right? Learn from others, you know, find a tribe of like-minded people. There you go, as you'll learn, there's a lot of groups out there of different industries, some in your own and some that might be in, in businesses that you want to um, work with. And they won't know how to come knock on your door, right? We all put up our little shingle <laughs> online or whatever and excited. they'll just come, right? Build it, they will come. But like any networking, you have to put yourself out there as well. It's nice if they know to come to you, but um, you do have to put in some effort. So your LinkedIn profile, this is where you start. I'm sure the majority of us have a LinkedIn profile, kind of like Facebook, right? We start off with our friend profile and then we have a business page. So LinkedIn works similar to how Facebook works where you start with a profile, you build, you um, create a business page and it's administered um, by, managed by your profile, right? So starting with your profile, if you don't have a business page, should be clear, co completely filled out. It should reflect what you're currently doing. If you haven't updated it since you looked for that last job in you know, 2007, you should probably take a look at it. Uh, make sure you have a good headshot in there. You know, very important. The two, Katrina and Henri here, nice, clear, uh, good, good amount of background on there. I think the, the one Rivka, not to pick on her, wherever she is, a um, little too close up of a headshot, in, in my opinion. Don't use something that you would use on Facebook and Instagram with your dog or your, you know, deer face or whatever. I think we all know it's business to business. So this isn't where you have those uh, pictures with your loved one or your kids or whatever. 
clear, nice business headshot you should have there. Um, you can have a um, change your banner, your headline banner, your profile banner and on there as well, reflect your business or, or can leave it, you know, the, the blank one, but usually use it. It's a space to use to advertise you or your business, right? So make sure that's completely filled out. And then also make sure you're SEO optimized, right? So if you go search your name, most likely your LinkedIn profile is gonna come up pretty high. As you can see on mine here, I just typed in my name and it's number three right after my website address, which is great for organic reach and my Facebook page. And then after that comes my LinkedIn. So, um, and I should have, I do have pages, but it comes up with my profile first. So you want to make sure anything in your in your headline, your profile headline has terms that people can search for. And in your about, you want to have search terms about your businesses in case somebody's looking for that, make it easier and make it easy for SEO for that to pull up as well. Okay. So everybody check their name on Google and see if their profile comes up or not. And make sure you SEO your photo name and your background banner that I already mentioned. So you know, have it your name on there and your business name, whatever you want to put, rather than just, you know, picture number 432.4.jpg, right? Whatever came off of your camera. Right? And then your LinkedIn headline. So very important, use it effectively, right? So that's the lines under the couple lines underneath the name. So here's a couple of different examples of how to use it. Um, the up in the upper left-hand corner, Mr. Patel, he's a co-founder of Mailshake. We're hiring sales reps and back-end devs. So he's using it to get some more employees in. Great. And then Morgan on the upper right is CEO, founder of Blavity, the largest digital millennial news and media company for African-Americans in the U.S. So she could have just put CEO of Blavity, but a lot of us know what Blavity is, right? So explaining exactly what it is and hopefully gaining interest and want to connect with her. Um, Lisa Beyer, she she got a lot going on, right? So she's using her headline banner to mark, to show her book that she has. She's a, a PR disruptor, social media or social PR agency CEO founder. So she's uh, you know has a lot going on there. And then Max, he's the founding partner, and he helps companies, startups, and countries commercialize innovation and get products to market. So explains a little bit more what you do, kind of like writing your. Um, you know, your, your pitch, right? Your elevator pitch in a sense, but you can also use it to put keywords for what you do on there as well. Um, I think I have that. Let me go back to mine. There we go. So I don't know if you can see um, mine is on the circle. It's marketing specialist, marketing public speaker, board president, advisory boards. I think there's another line on there. It's not showing, but um, so I'm using more keywords approach. So if somebody's looking for somebody who's been on a board, looking for marketing specialist, speaker, those terms would come up uh, potentially. I'm not looking for a job, so I'm not putting you know what kind of jobs I'm looking for. And then a few more. So uh, can we come do fun ones? Here's um, Kimberly, foundations recruiter at Airbnb, career matchmaker, unicorn hunter. Okay. Um, so look, I guess Unicorn Hunter looking for those special people for, for careers. Um, I help purpose-driven Hoosiers grow their career with Indiana State government, no matter their career path, so specific to where he's located. Um, I love the Jason Juan. I don't usually stock profiles, but when I do, I usually have a career opportunity for you, want to connect, very cool. Um, so you can have fun with this, right? Uh, 17 new public accounting jobs, want me to review or edit your resume, need some candidate therapy, DMs are open. So you can, you know, have fun with it or, or, you know, make it serious up to you, whatever, whatever works. And you can change it, you know, if you, it's not working um, for you. And then you, then you want to change, you know, create a business page if you haven't already, right? So you have your profile and then you have a business page. And as I mentioned, your business page is managed by your profile. Okay. So different things you can do, create your company page, post content, and I'm going to go over each one of these separately, um, add LinkedIn groups to your page tag people in your posts and use LinkedIn hashtags. Okay, so let's start with creating a company page, right? Very easy. You go up to that work icon, those nine little dots, go to the drop down, and then it shows create a company page right at the bottom. You're then gonna choose, are you a small business? Fewer than 200, that's probably gonna be most of you. Um, medium to large, are you a showcase page? 
um, or schools and university education. So some of you, I don't know if some of you might be education as well. Once you choose that, the rest of it's pretty easy to do. I'm not going to walk through that because it's just adding your information in there and getting it set up. You can create your headline banner for your page. And then you do have to invite people in, just like your, your Facebook page and profile. You have to invite your friends to like it in the same way you have to invite your connected people to connect to it or to follow it. Um, it's not automatic, okay? And then once you have that set up, you can post um, relevant, engaging content. You wanna make sure your post, this is B2B, right? This isn't where you're gonna post up what you ate for lunch and what you did on summer vacation and you know what events you're attending, unless they are business related, right? So not LinkedIn, Facebook type pro, uh, um, posts out there, but you know, make tip, helpful tips, tricks, information related to your industry, um, prove that you're an expert in your field, write about a subject you can add value and actionable insights to, and avoid writing too many promotional presentations, you know, focus more on uh, content that provides in-depth information for your followers. Um, could be company, company um, milestones, things like that as well. Um, you know, it could be events that you're hosting, perhaps, that are industry-related. Um, so, uh, you know, or share industry-related topics. My transportation logistics client, I write blogs for her and do social media. And we do a little bit differently for some things are the same for Facebook, Instagram. It's more of the company culture type stuff. LinkedIn, we're using more for the, um, you know, more of the educational things around uh, transportation logistics, like what's cold chain logistics, you know, how to how to transport, you know, spe uh, human specimen, human tissue, um, how to, you know, what how e-commerce from start to finish. So things that would revolve around what services she offers, you know, how to work with a courier service, you know, top 10 tips to have a good relationship with your logistics partner, things like that. So definitely more B2B, more angled towards industries that she would want to do business with, right? Then next one, make sure your company name is known. So again, um, you want to invite people to connect um, on here and um, here in, you know, invite your connections to like your page, follow your page, sorry, it's trailing off there. And then promote your LinkedIn company page on your other social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, do a post on there and say, hey, come check out my new page. Mention your LinkedIn page in your emails as well. And then you can add LinkedIn groups to your page, right? So your LinkedIn page can't be part of a group, only your profile can, but you can add those groups to your page. So you can start connecting, right? So it can be uh, groups that are in your industry or groups that you want to potentially connect with. So I'll just keep using my, my B2B client, Transportation Logistics. So she is in a bunch of TNL uh, industry uh, groups, but she wants to do business in the healthcare, right? Because she moves human tissue of all types and, and uh, refrigerated medications, things like that. So she might want to join groups in the medical, pharmaceutical, you know, industry, human tissue, whatever, however those groups are um, to kind of expand and be a part of the conversation, you know, so she can connect those to her page, right? And then you want to mention people in LinkedIn posts. So that ex potentially expands your connections, right? So say, you know, for example, you, this one, we had a talk with Kate of Wave Video. So we've, we've connected to her here and potentially she's going to see that, oh, you've been, you know, tagged in a post and then perhaps share that, you know, with her connections. So just like you would kind of tag people on Instagram or Facebook, you want to make sure that they see it and potentially will follow, you know, and then maybe get some more connections that way. Right. And then when do you post? So a little bit different than uh, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera. Um, think of it more kind of the morning and afternoon, right? More people come in, they, you know, get on their computers at work, log in, check their emails, kind of like checking the morning paper. So first thing in the morning and generally in the evening just before work ends, All right? There's a highest level of engagement. Mondays and Fridays, you know, because we're kind of recovering from the weekend. We're not spending as much time maybe on social. Friday, we're kind of getting ready for the weekend <laughs> and not spending as much time on it. So best times, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mornings and evenings. Um, you can try those times. And then use hashtags, just like you would on other 
the forms, um, other platforms. So a little obviously more business related. These are marketing. Uh, Social Media Insider is a, um, an online and email um, resource for marketers uh, all about what's happening on social media. So they're obviously talking about TikTok marketing. So they're using hashtag TikTok marketing, social media managers, hashtag marketing. So tagging things and people and, and um, groups that would potentially want to find their particular posts. So, and then how do we find leads on LinkedIn, right? So number of different ways you can find them. So how to grow your network, how to do <laughs> grow your network, keep your profile updated as I already mentioned. Right. Add connections to your network. It, it does take active time to go and grow your network. Right. It's not going to happen automatically. You know, sure, people are going to want to connect with you, but you want to make sure you're finding, you know, quality leads as well, potentially people to connect with. Um, you can look at who viewed you. You know, maybe if they didn't connect with you, you might want to just go ahead and reach out, and connect with them if it makes sense. Maybe former clients you have connections of your first connection. So some people have them open where you can go and connect, uh, click on a first connection and then see, look at who they're connected to and click on that. Maybe some of them are, um, you know, related industries or related people that you want to connect with and then do searches for specific people or companies. I'll show you that in a second. A couple of ways to do um, searches. Um, write recommendations and ask for recommendations. So and make sure you do it for people you've done business with or worked with. Don't call me and go, Patty, can you write a recommendation on LinkedIn, but I've never worked with you or have done business with you. So make sure they're legitimate, um, authentic as well. Join groups. I already mentioned join groups in your industry if, if they exist in your industry or join groups for people that uh, are industries rather that you want to potentially do business with, right? So you want to do business with transportation logistics, go join those TNL groups and, and don't, I wouldn't spam them, but just join the conversation, see who's out there, see who maybe you want to connect with, who's active in the groups. Um, and then of course, use LinkedIn to celebrate the accomplishment of others, basically just be active, right? You can, uh, just like Facebook, you can wish people a happy birthday. I'm surprised now, my birthday was just last month, how many more in the past couple of years um, happy birthday wishes I get on LinkedIn comparison to uh, Facebook. Different people. I know more of my Facebook friends um, in real life, if you want to call it, compared to um, my LinkedIn, where I don't uh, know them as well. So it's interesting to see that people are more active on LinkedIn. And then their anniversary and they've changed jobs, things like that. So it just shows that you're actively involved on LinkedIn and paying attention going on. So some searches um, that you can do, right? When you do a search now, the upper left-hand corner search is not the free version search, okay? So just so you know, people are gonna go like, I don't see experience level. That's the paid version. So pre LinkedIn Premium or LinkedIn Sales Navigator give you a little bit more filters than you do. So you, if you're looking for director level or executive level, um, then, it, those are the paid versions. On the free, you don't get those uh, more, but you can potentially try to find some of these, right? So if you want to look, as an example here, mechanical engineer, uh, you can just type in mechanical engineer and it's going to find any people who are mechanical engineers. Um, you can do, uh, and then once you connect with them, I'll show you another way to do a search in a second. But once you say, okay, I want to connect with you, the invitation pops up. You can type in, it'll let you bypass the, the, the note. You can just say connect um, anyways or invite, but you can put a note. Maybe you met them somewhere and you want to connect with them here. Like me, I've asked you all to connect. So click the connections. Great seeing you on Patty's webinar today. Would love to connect. This way they can relate like where they saw you. Um, might not be that you saw them anywhere. Just connecting. Would love to connect with like-minded people in the industry. You know, think of something that could potentially relate to them wanting to connect with you. And then if they do connect with you, like you see on the right, acknowledge it. Say, thank you so much for connecting. You can leave it there and maybe reach out another time and just say, love, or hey, I would love to learn more about your business and how I can help you gain more clients, make it reciprocal. Maybe set up a, a virtual coffee date, you know, a quick 15 minute phone call where you can learn about each other's business to potentially you know, now we want to, again, make it reciprocal, not just, hey, let me tell you all about me, but I won't let you tell you about you, right? 
and then some more sophisticated searches. So even if you don't pay, you could potentially find those executive levels. I've shown some of my clients these searches in my chamber program. You can do what's called a Boolean search. So if you're familiar with Boolean search, just using quotes. So in this case, I wanna find, um, let's just say we'll just use transportation logistics, maybe use quote, you know, uh, start quote transportation, end quote transportation, and owner. So quote owner, as you can see, kind of up in that left-hand corner. Um, and so if there's a transportation company and there's an owner, it's gonna pull that up. In this case, we did environmental engineering and owner in this example on the page, and you pulled up owners, environmental engineering associates, owner, Sequoia Environmental, as opposed to somebody who's an environmental engineer, right? We wanna find owners. Say if you wanna find partners at a law firm, you can type in quote law firm and quote partner um, or some, I want to do business with wineries. I just type quote winery and quote owner and pull up. You can try different um, titles. Not everybody calls themselves the same. Maybe I'm CEO of the environmental engineering company or CEO of, um, you know, of the transportation logistics rather than owner you know, director, you can try those titles, you know, office manager, general manager, and the type of business you want to do. Say if you're trying to reach the human resources director. So you could type in environmental engineering and quote human resources, because you want to reach that person in the environmental engineering company. So yeah, so exactly. So Robin, um, should I put in here chief visionary officer? So you might like if somebody was looking for a, what company for our company you do, but if they're looking for a CEO, if you have um, something that is not usual, that could be potentially people might not be able to find you if they don't know what a CVO is because they're typing in CEO or owner or executive director or um, on there. So that might hurt in the searches anyways, but I like the title though. I think my client, uh, she, I don't know if she uses it on LinkedIn. I have to look at her profile, but she says she sometimes calls herself chief logistics officer, but I think she's still CEO of her company um, and just uses that kind of on the side. So hopefully that makes sense. And let me just say I'm looking for questions. Um, I will, and then I'll talk about the different uh, paid versions of that. I think that answers your question, Robin. And uh, Google search with LinkedIn as well. I'm not sure what you're asking there, Robin, on that one. You want to ask that again. And thanks there. Everybody's putting their LinkedIn here. I was looking back for questions here. Okay, everybody's sharing. I like it. Um, RT Clown, we serve personal corporate events. Okay, perfect. So already sharing. I'm just looking for questions as well. So I hope the Boolean search makes sense. All right, so you can kind of get around those extra filters if you don't want to pay and you're looking for specific groups, but this is a place to do that. If you have very specific industries or people that you're trying to reach, um, I'm just thinking of some of my chamber clients looking to reach um, people in a certain school district, right? Here in Los Angeles, that's actually the second largest school district in the country is Los Angeles Unified School District, and he's looking to reach teachers in that district, and I don't know, remember if there were specific teachers, but just say teacher, so quote, teacher, and, and we did a couple of different ways. We did quote, LAUSD, as it's known in, in uh, initials. And we also did Los Angeles Unified School District, all spelled out, and we came up with them either way. So you wanna try both in that case. You're looking for, you know, CPAs, um, owners, quote, CPA and owner. So owners of law of CPA firms, potentially. So try different combinations, depending on who you're trying to reach. If anybody has any that people that they're looking for, want to put them in chat, I can maybe help you with that as well. So hopefully that's clear. You know, there, there's no other social media platform where you can do this level of search for specific audiences um, and specific people at jobs. Um, you know, maybe it's also figuring out, okay, well, who in a company do I really need to speak to? Event planners, right? A lot of, I talk, talk to a lot of event and wedding planners. They're like, okay, who, how do I find people? Like, well, okay, so you can search for event planners, wedding planners, they're on here, but there might be event planners at companies, right? You want to reach the person who plans their corporate events, 
Is that the human resources person? Is there an office manager, um, event coordinator? There could be numerous titles that person fits in. Maybe it's the marketing director that plans events. So you can even just do, you know, maybe certain companies and just do and type in the word and event. And maybe it will in their title is event coordinator. So play around with the search on there and see what titles come up. It's not always cut and dry for most industries here. Okay. So hopefully that's clear. You can also, you know, import your email contacts. So if you do have some and you want to connect with them on LinkedIn, you can draw import in your contacts and, and then see who pops up, right? They have to match with the email address, of course. And then this is an interesting one. I just learned about this last year. Um, you can connect with lions, okay? Not the ones that roar, <laughs> and no tigers and bears, but these are people who will connect with everyone, right? They have in their title lion of some sort, LinkedIn Open Network, Open Networker. You can see down here at the bottom, there's different ways that people put a lion or lions or lions with the periods or LinkedIn Open Network. So you can do some searches and you can add yourself as a lion. Just you put that in your title next to your name. <clears throat> and uh, when that comes up, you can connect and they will supposedly connect with everybody. But you know, I don't know how many there are in the world. I have actually, somebody wants to do a search on LinkedIn and put just lion, L-O-N, and see how many come up and search and put it in chat. I can't stop to do that right now in the middle of this, but I'd be curious. Um, and so then you might want to narrow it down. Maybe you can do the, the Boolean search, quote, lion and uh, transportation logistics or transportation or, or environmental engineer. So maybe you want to narrow that down to a different, a certain type of, of industry. Um, Cause I don't know, there could be somebody, I don't know if somebody's going to do the search, but there maybe there's hundreds of thousands, right? We don't want to potentially connect to all of those. So maybe you could narrow it down like, yeah, okay. I want to connect to that first guy who's a mobile insurance advisor. Cause I'm working with insurance people or um, the senior software engineer at a, at a company. So um, maybe you want to narrow that down. So that's a, another way to gain, gain some potential uh, connections. Lions. Make sure you uh, share, share, as I mentioned already, social shares is an email on business to consumer. Um, you can do the social sharing at the top. And that's, you can see those buttons. That means when you click on them or somebody clicks on them, it's going to open up that share box for you to share it on your LinkedIn or your Facebook. Social following at the bottom is you're asking people to you know, like you on Facebook, follow you on Twitter, follow, connect with you on LinkedIn. Um, and you can use either your profile or your business page link um, down at the bottom to follow. So not many are coming up as uh, lions when I search in LinkedIn. Yeah, try the maybe with the periods as well and see comes up. Uh, might work. Yeah, but I appreciate you doing that, Jerry. Thank you. Um, I feel like there was a lot, a lot of them, but it might just be the way that they have them in there. Um, so growing your network dumps, right? So, and does everybody here have a pro, anybody here not yet have a LinkedIn profile and not afraid to share that? Raise your hand or just put it in chat. So hopefully everybody's, nobody's shy to admit that. Cool. Everybody here has, I'm going to assume everybody here has one. Good job. <laughs> okay. So what not to do to grow your network, right? You don't want to give only because you expect to receive. Again, make sure it's reciprocal. Everything you do, you don't give it all. It means you're just not participating. You're not, you know, interacting with anybody. You're not posting, you're not really doing anything, right? Um, you wait until you have a need, uh, like you're looking for a job or looking for clients. It might be more obvious if you're just popping in and popping off. You don't want to do that. And you forget where you are. Again, it's not, it's LinkedIn. It's not Instagram or Facebook. We're not putting up our cute dog videos and our, our um, what, what we ate for dinner, unless it has something to do with your business. Okay. Um, and then you don't follow industry leaders. So again, as I mentioned, join those groups, follow your industry or people and in industries you want to follow or thought leaders out there just to connect and pay, pay attention to what's going on in the world, uh, at least in the business world. Um, you just don't care. Again, that kind of ties into number two, I guess. You don't give it all. Um, you ignore your team's network. If you have a team, you know, see who they're following and connecting with. And then um, this one is... Um, don't spam network, but don't spam. So 
um, what I mean by this is you you want to make sure that you're connect you, you are connecting with people who really you should connect with right that are, are have interest with you sure we can connect with people that we potentially could be a resource but if you're going to do any major outreach um, make sure the per the person who's receiving the message is the fit for the ideal message the example i always give is there was a gal who connected with me and i accepted her connection and i get the pop-up you know uh message which was is fine i'll show you about automated messaging in a second but her message was um hey are you looking to start a business you know tired tired of working for somebody else when you, you want to start your first business and i'm like this girl did not even read my profile it was obvious because if she went to my profile she would see I've had my own businesses since 2006, I think I have it listed as. So I don't need to start my own first business. I'm not working for somebody else, but I was obviously cast into a wide net of, of uh, people that she wanted to connect with. So before she connected, now she might be using an automated service, but she should really look and see. And I told her, look and see what what says, because then I'm just not your ideal customer, right? Now, this is a networking site, folks, right? So um, don't be afraid to network, right? I think we, we're we weird about LinkedIn, right? We'll connect to people and I'm like, oh, I don't want to you know, reach out. I don't want to annoy them. I don't want them to, to be annoyed. I, I contact them by my business, right? That's the purpose of this, right? And there was a gal in one of my classes where you know, talk, it was a live meeting and we're talking back and forth. And she says, well, I put up a message on mine for people, you know, not to connect with me if blah, blah, blah. I forgot what she said exactly. And I said, so you're wanting them to connect to you or you expect your connections to be accepted, but not the other way around. I said, that would be equivalent to you and I meeting at a mixer, right? I'll just use Robin. Her name came up there and Robin and I met and I'm introducing myself to Robin. And I say, hey, I'm Patty with Golden State Marketing. And suddenly a hand comes up in my face. Nope, nope, I don't want to hear about it. Like, we wouldn't do that, right? Hopefully, <laughs> I wouldn't do that at a live mixer. You know, like, I don't want to hear about you, but hey, I'm going to tell you all about myself, right? So that's what that would be equivalent of shutting somebody, you know, saying, don't reach out, don't, don't connect with me if you don't do the A, B, or C. Um, you never know who connections can be. So that's, you know... That's why we're here, connect with people. We're all here to do business with each other, gain resources from each other. This is where you should do it and not be shy about it. And not everybody's gonna connect. It's okay if you reach out to people and you don't get an invite back. You know, they've maybe done their research, looked at your profile, decided, eh, I don't really have a use for this, I'm not interested, and then just don't, you know, ignore the connection or they're just not on, you know, as often, so. And then should you pay, as I mentioned there, you know, that one uh, extra filters, there's a couple options. Um, there's LinkedIn premium business and sales navigator. It's actually called core. I didn't change the slides. LinkedIn sales navigator core. Um, the price, this is the price if you pay annually, if you pay monthly, um, it's 75 and 99, I think uh, is the current pricing on that. But LinkedIn premium business gets you a little bit more information than you would on the free version. You get what's called in mails. You get 15 of them uh, with premium business. And that means you can send an email to somebody within LinkedIn without having to be connected. So maybe there are some you know, key CEOs out there or CDOs of companies that you want to reach and you don't want to wait for them to maybe or maybe not connect with you. So you can send them a direct message. Um, you can see more of who viewed your profile, where I think the free version now might show you like two or three and the rest are blank, right? Um, so more people browsing, you get more of those filters, um, salary and job insights if that's needed by your company, um, access to their learning courses, so a lot more information there. And then on core, Sales Navigator core, 50 emails per month, some of the same features as, as a profile, um, more leads, uh, save leads that you can do. So a little bit more that you get with the, the Sales Navigator core, if you're really using this as a pure sales tool, okay? And then uh, this is from uh, came from LinkedIn online. These charts here show you kind of the difference of what you get or don't get with each of these. Uh, you probably don't need, I think, the Advanced or the Advanced Plus on the Sales Navigator. 
um, but those will show you the difference from on LinkedIn. So those slides are available. Now you can automate lead outreach, right? So say you um, reached your transportation logistics CEOs out there in the United States and there's 50,000 of them potentially. And are we gonna connect to 50,000 of them one by one or a thousand? I mean, anything over say a hundred, <laughs> a couple hundred might be a lot of work for you to connect with. So there are automation tools out there. And what those are basically, I'll show you this. This is from a company called Connected that I, I use their tool. Um, and basically you get three features right with it, hunting, engaging, and nurturing. So it's basically setting up automated lead uh, connecting here. So it won't connect automatically, it still will have to do the invite, but you put in your search. So you, you go onto LinkedIn and if you're you know, uh, subscribing to their program, you go on LinkedIn, you do your search or your searches, it might be multiple searches. I'm gonna reach owners at wineries. I'm gonna reach owners at tech companies or CEOs at environmental engineering. You can do as many searches of groups that you want. You bring them into um, Connected as one of the tools out there. And then it's gonna to attempt to, to connect with those people, just as if you did it. Um, it would connect and once it does, it sets, it starts sending out the sequence. Like you see the pop-ups come up, thank you for connecting. We'd love to learn more about you, whatever the messaging is. And you, as you can see here, so right, we do the search, we the hunting, right? The next step, engaging. So as soon as they connect, if they do, you start, you create the sequence. What do you want to happen? You know, hey, let's talk. Uh, let me learn about your business right, get them to engage. And then hopefully, if they're still interested, right, your sales funnel, your nurture and close, right, you've done the hunting and gathering, as you can see. And then you can say, hey, follow up discovery call, whatever it is. Um, I know somebody who uh, her business is selling businesses, selling companies. So if I wanted to sell my agency one day, she, I would hire her to do that, right? She says 95% of her business is through LinkedIn. And she uses, she uses a different one. I think it's called linked, linked helper, LinkedIn helper. So there are other third party tools out there other than connected. And, and I'll type that in if you're interested in looking it up. Org on there. Um, for this tool, I think it's like $89 a month, uh, similar to what LinkedIn sales navigator. So just so you know, LinkedIn does not have these uh, automation tools on them. LinkedIn's philosophy is that this is just like as if we meet at a mixer. Okay, so you meet one on one, you share your business cards, you tell each other about each other and connect. All right, so LinkedIn Sales Navigator, they don't do the um, uh, um, the automations. They give you more insights and more tools. So I know this gal I was just mentioning, she uses, I think she uses LinkedIn Sales Navigator um, as well as the LinkedIn helper um, out there. It's similar to Connected to nurture the leads. And that's how she closes most of her business. You know, obviously she's targeting people. Hey, you're interested in selling your business? You know, if they are at that point, they're like, oh yeah, let me learn more. You know, and I know we all get these. If you're active on LinkedIn, we connect and the pop-ups come up and they automatically, hey, tell, let me tell you about my services. I'm okay with it because people are pushing their information to me and it might be something I'm interested in. I get all of the, hey, let me help you with marketing. Here's the latest marketing tool. Here's the hire us to do your marketing, you know, all, all of that. Sometimes, you know, I read all of them that pop up and I'm like, nah, no, I'm not interested in that. Or yeah, tell me more. Because this way I don't have to search. And there might be a tool out there that I don't even know existed that could help me, right? Like I'm gonna help you do something faster or smarter. I'm like, wow, there's something out there to do that. Let's look, <laughs> right? I was just talking to one of my clients about uh, becoming a, an automation expert, right? Somebody, if you need something automated, he can, whatever it is, you know, tell them your automation problems or what you're trying to do and you can fix it, you know? And that's exactly what kind of LinkedIn is. Sometimes it's like, hey, I didn't know that tool existed and uh, I might actually need it, you know? So hopefully that makes sense with um, the automation tools. So can, it, you can contact Connected, you can do a demo um, um, out there and, and show, they can show you what the tool does and all that. And I think it's just a month, it's month to month basis, uh, which I have a couple of clients who are actually starting to use um, their services now. 
And then, so the calendar. So some of you are probably already familiar with my calendar if you've attended any of my other classes. And I explain this again. So this is where I find most businesses get stuck. Um, they're not, they're overwhelmed with getting social media done, getting emails out um, on a regular basis. I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to post on social media. I don't know what to email about on a regular basis and just getting it all out of their head. I'm like, oh my God, I haven't posted since last Tuesday. And oh, now, now what should I post? And you kind of forget and don't post, right? So getting it on paper, um, will help with that overwhelm. This is one place I find that most people get overwhelmed. Okay. So, and the importance of it too, and this is linked I'm assuming that some of you or most of you also post on Instagram, Facebook, all that across social media. Um, if you're posting on say Facebook, especially the organic reach on Facebook right now, and has been for years is about one to three percent. And Instagram's changing a little bit too with their algorithms because there's more content being posted out there. So the more engagement you get, the more people are interacting with your content, liking, sharing, commenting, um, the more reach you're going to get. So if you're not posting on a regular basis, there's nowhere for people to engage with you, right? So, and especially Facebook is the, is the lowest organic reach out there. LinkedIn, not as bad because there's not many people posting so far. It's kind of like the early days of Facebook you know, or Instagram. Um, so not as much content, but people don't go to that as much as the other social media platforms for content if it's you know, not looking for business related content. So very important across all the social media platforms, be posting on a regular basis as much as you possibly can. Right. If, if you're only doing it once a week, try to ramp it up to a couple more times a week. Get it up to almost daily if you can, at least Monday through Friday out there. LinkedIn, you're not going to really want to post on the weekends. It's it's a business to business platform. It's Monday through Friday. All right. So very important. So the calendar I'm going to show you is my calendar. You're all going to be able to download. It's an Excel file and easy to use. You can use whatever you want. You, you can you even Canva has a content planner tool as well on there. Um, you can use that, whatever you want to use. I think just once you get it, see the format of a, of a content calendar and how to use it and start planning and using it. Um, and I have the wrong slide in here. I've updated this slide, but I talk about make sure you're planning as far ahead as possible. And, you know, talking with a few clients recently, I'm like, you're going to need to schedule, put that time on your calendar, right? That you're going to spend to planning out your social media, creating your social media, if that's you, if you're the only one doing it. Don't wait until you're like, oh, let me see if I have time, right? Because we know what our schedules are like and I'm going to have time. So take a two hour chunk or one hour chunk, whatever it is. And that's your time to uninterrupted to plan out your calendar and create the social media graphics, the email and all that and get it out. Okay. Plan, plan as far ahead as possible. My, cal my new calendar comes out every October because I'm already starting to plan with, with my private clients by in October, before even December hits, we have most of the next year planned out as much as we can, right? We know if we're going to repeat events from this current year, repeat promotions, anything that's going to be repeated. And then I just add in all the extra filler stuff. So before January even hits, we're ready to go because you don't want to wait till January because by the time you plan it out and wake up from the holiday coma that we all go in after the holidays, It'll be Valentine's Day. So if you're if you're holiday driven, which some of you may may be, it's important to uh, plan out. Christmas time should be in bed by September first. Don't wait till October to plan out your holidays. Plan out your social media a month ahead if you can, two months ahead, as far ahead as you can, so you're not scrambling and missing and go. Oh yeah, okay, I only got to three posts this last month. Okay, so once you see the calendar, hopefully it will make sense on how to use it. You can download, use this tool, or use something similar, but use something. Okay, so you'll get uh, again this is an Excel file. You can translate to Google Sheets as well. Um, you'll get a tab with hashtag days, so these can be used B two C or B two B. I'll show you on the calendar how to use them. And you'll get all the general, general, generic, general hashtag days out there to use potentially. 
content ideas. So some of these are be more for B2C, more of Instagram, Facebook than you might find on LinkedIn, but be the expert category there. You see industry articles, answered questions, um, how to videos about your product or service, perhaps time saving or money saving tips, as long as they're business, business related. Um, you know, timely topics, industry news, trending topics, things like that would be more of the LinkedIn appropriate. But if you're doing both, those are some content ideas for both. Okay. National Hall. And actually, I, I realized I, I changed my uh, presentations around all the time. I didn't update this. There is now a um, uh, tab that has video content ideas as well. So it can be used for B2C and maybe some of B2B as well. So that's missing uh, the slide. And then holidays. Now, again, B2C versus B2B, some of these would be appropriate for Instagram and Facebook, some for potentially for LinkedIn. I'll give you some examples of that. Um, so nationaldaycalendar.com, these are where these come from, um, has day holidays, week holidays, month holidays. So National Hot Dog Day, National Hot Dog Month, National Hot Dog Week on there. You can have fun with these um they are content right you want people to engage with your content so i always use this example again this more wouldn't be b2b necessarily but you know national peanut butter and jelly day right so what does it have to do with our businesses but a lot of us ate peanut butter and jelly as kids and um you can do hey it's national peanut butter and jelly day what, what was your favorite uh peanut butter and jelly combination as a kid right those are things that we would probably answer and share you know people ask questions to get that engagement right you want them to comment on it like it share it okay my trend we'll just talk about my tnl client um this month we had national barcode day national logistics day um i think there was one other it was really totally related to her business right so a national arizona day which i thought hmm, as we're looking down the list i i do my planning with my client the beginning of each or end of each month for the coming month and she's looking down the list of holidays. She goes, oh yeah, let's do National Arizona Day. And she happened to have a picture of one of her courier vans crossing into Arizona with the welcome to Arizona sign. And we did a post on, hey, you know, uh, Pearl is now in, um, in Arizona doing courier services. So you never know. Uh, National Intern Day, I think we're gonna use coming up in July because she has some interns she's hired. So some may be related to your business. Some may just be for fun you know, for your business. Um, you know, I have a beer bar client. There's New Beer's Eve, National Beer Day, National Craft Beer Day, National Bartender Day. So there may be some that you find that are related or you can have fun with them as content, kind of make them related if possible. So those, I'll show you those on the calendar as well. So these are the calendars. So this is a B2C version and I'll kind of show you how it works. It's the same exact calendar B2B. It's just different content. Okay, so for those of you that are more B2C, the calendar works the same way, right? You have your uh, color coding at the top, the reddish is holidays, whether it's the traditional or the fun ones, okay? Um, email campaigns in orange, green are events, baby blue blog posts, and dark blue social media posts. Okay, so when you get the calendar, this is gonna be mostly blank. The only thing that you're gonna see on there are um, the traditional holidays. In this case, veterans, Thanksgiving, and Hanukkah. The rest will be blank for you to fill in. Okay, this is any wineries here by chance? Raise your hand. I know there's always some in all the counties that I teach in. Any any wineries? Put it in chat or yes. Maybe at first one, I don't have a winery in here. Okay, there is a winery version of the calendar. So in case any wineries watch this later, um, you'll see both of them. The only difference is that the nationaldaycalendar.com site that I've now pasted into this calendar for you, um, the, they don't have all the wine related holidays. So I went and manually found those and dropped them on the wine version catalog. So when you see both, that's the only difference. If you want to, if you want to promote wine holidays, download the winery version. And they'll be plugged in on the calendar. So, just want to explain that. So, how this works? I'm going to start with social media, and again, it doesn't matter if it's B two B or B two C, but you should always have two lines of blue, dark blue, for each social media post. Okay, ignore the fact that some of these don't. I just didn't fill out all the examples, but you should have two lines of blue. The first line is going to be what type of post you're going to do. 
Okay, is it uh, a hashtag day that you're going to promote? Um, maybe it's a, a content idea like ask a question, inspirational quote. Maybe it's a holiday of some kind that you're putting up there. So first line is always what type of post. Okay, second is going to be more specific. This is for planning and archive purposes, right? We're going to put specifically tasting room Tuesday the second. We're gonna we're gonna do a post on the Thanksgiving wine special. On the third, we're going to do a Merlot tasting video, right? On the fourth, I didn't put the second line for National Donut Day, but it could be um, specifically chocolate donut and Zinfandel. This way I know to, when I start creating the graphic and all the content, I know to go pull some pictures of a chocolate donut and put it with our bottles in, right? So get more specific on it. You ask a question on the 13th, we're going to ask, what is your favorite Thanksgiving side dish? So this way, you know, go create all the graphics, you know what you're going to do specifically. And for archive, when you're looking to create next year's calendar, you can go back easily and look at it and go, oh yeah, okay, we did the chocolate donut in Zoom for National Donut Day this year. So get very specific on those. And if you have more than one post on those days, you'll have, you know, two lines, you know, per, po per post on that on each day. And since this is an Excel file, you can add rows to expand each of the each of the days, um, the calendar blocks. For email purposes, I'm sure hopefully a lot of you are doing email marketing it is the best return on investment of any tool out there. Uh, works a little bit differently, right? You work a little backwards with this. So in this case, for this month, we have an event to promote, the wine club party. We have, um, I, I can consider those promotional events, Black Friday through Giving Tuesday, and that's it for events. We have a Thanksgiving wine special we're running, and then we also have the um, a weekend Merlot Day three-pack special we're doing. So starting with the event, on the 20th, we're going to work backwards. The very last email we're going to send for that is the 19th, the last chance to RSVP, and then working backwards from there. Once a week, usually events I would do six to eight weeks out, give people a chance to RSVP and plan to attend. And so once a week going backwards from there, you would mark your calendar, which dates you want to send them on. Um, the uh, wine club special that's, or sorry, the Thanksgiving wine special that's running. So that's the last the Thanksgiving day. <coughs> Excuse me. We want it to arrive by Thanksgiving. So we know. The last day we can potentially ship wine for pre-Thanksgiving arrival is going to be the 17th. So we'll say the last day to um, send an email is the 16th. Last chance, hurry, get it, get it before Thanksgiving. And then working backwards about a month um, back, I would send out the Thanksgiving wine special. The Merlot three-pack was only for a weekend. Send it on Saturday. Final reminder, Sunday it ends at midnight in case they miss the Saturday email. And then the Black Friday through Giving Tuesday, those were four different emails, four different themes and promotions and stuff on there. So it was one email a day. So that's how email works. So it should be pretty clear. I'm gonna show you now the, the B2B version. Again, it looks exactly the same, just the type of content. So this would be say for my marketing business, right? So I'm gonna use hashtag days. I'm gonna use Marketing Monday, Tip Tuesday. Um, I don't think I use any others on this example. But um, what I'm going to do for those, right? I'm going to do an industry article on social media. Um, how many hashtags for Tip Tuesday? For the holidays, the fun ones, I guess you can say, um, I'm using National Stress Awareness Day. So I'm going to give articles on stress relief tips for business owners. Or uh, National Philan Philanthropy Day, how do you give back you know, for your business? So more business-related content. Than I would. I do um, emails for my upcoming webinars. If you're on my email list, um, I do social, might do social media posts, or we, at least we post them up when the events um, on social media. So I same, you know, all this is not totally filled out, but same way to use it. So hopefully that makes sense on the calendars. There, I don't hopefully have any questions on it, let me know. So you will be able to download the calendar, can be used B2B or B2C, same way. Um, and if you want to stay on my list for future emails, I will make sure you're on my calendar list and you'll get the 2023 and beyond calendar so you don't have to recreate it yourself. Uh, but use any tool that you want out there. Um, like I said, Canva, I, I did some exploring yesterday with a few clients. Their content planner could potentially work. It won't, won't work for me because I have multiple clients on one Canva account, but if you have one, one business, you can look at that. It makes it a little bit easier to put together a calendar 
and easily go to create the graphic and post it up on social media. So take a look at that if you haven't already. So, and then once I'm, as I mentioned, once you get things on a calendar, you can coordinate your social media and email campaigns, whether B2B or B2C. You can create the email on the left or the Instagram posts on the right and everything's coordinated because you now have it all on a calendar, right? So next steps for your business, right? So what plan do you need in place to manage your LinkedIn strategy? Um, if you don't already have one, what would that mean if you did have it, if you knew how to do these searches and find the right people? And then what support do you need to plan and execute your LinkedIn and your marketing plan, right? So I invite all of you to schedule a 15 minute discovery call with me. No obligation to do anything. We can talk LinkedIn strategy or anything you want. Um, if you're already a chamber client of mine and you're in the room, just stick with the normal um, chamber appointments. <laughs> don't, don't schedule the strategy call. Um, and, or you can go to callwithpatty.com or scan this QR code and schedule that time with me to um, hopefully help you with some marketing ideas. So are there any other questions that we have for uh, about LinkedIn? Let's see, I'm looking, oh, so we have a couple here. Oh, what is the name of the connection tool? Um, it's uh, connected, I put it in chat, I'm gonna type it again, K-E-N-N-E-C-T-E-D.org, connected.org. And you can um, check their website. I think you can schedule a demo straight from there. Uh, if you need any help reaching out to them, let me know. I can connect you to Chase or Sawyer, the guys I work with there. Again, I don't have any connection with the business other than I use the tool um, and I like it. So, um, but you're welcome to check them out or any of the third party tools out there. And then Viviana answered, if you're still here, is a number of hashtags on LinkedIn post a factor. I encountered the res sorry, recommendation of using a limit of at most three hashtags on posts in order to get the LinkedIn posts listed else also. Um, I don't know if there's necessarily a maximum. Usually like Instagram says up to 30. Um, with LinkedIn, we usually keep it around three to five. I don't think it affects LinkedIn as far as it, your post showing up. It wouldn't be like you would on Instagram, like putting 30 of them up there, but keep it minimal. Like for my TNL client, we'll use a lot more on, on LinkedIn and then, or sorry, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, and then we'll drop them down to like the core, you know, the business one and a few others that, you know, tra hashtag transportation, hashtag logistics, kind of the main ones on LinkedIn. So hopefully that helps. Um, I'm looking to grow my video creation business. Uh, should I still list my day job, which is architectural billing? Um, that's a good question. So this has come up uh, with a couple of uh, chamber clients of mine that have a side business, but then they also are working somewhere or they have two different businesses and they don't necessarily want one to know about the other. And it's tricky because you can't create two profiles. LinkedIn will not allow that. Um, so you kind of have to decide um, how you want to do it. Is it okay that you're doing a job as architectural billing, but you also list, is, would it conflict at all? Would your bosses care that you have uh, maybe a side gig right now, a video creation business? I mean, they might not know that you're want to, maybe one day you'd want to be that your entire business. So you have to kind of determine um, what you want. Uh, you know, yeah, when it's two different businesses, I had one uh, client I'm working with in the wine industry and um, he does winery compliance training and he has a different business that he does and, or his job. And he didn't, I said, well, can you get rid of the other stuff and not only have the wine industry stuff on there, but he didn't want to change one or the other. So it does get a little tricky if you're trying to live in two worlds on, on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, let's see what it, okay. I already answered that. I think I answered all of the questions in Q and a, uh, oops, where are we here? Sorry. I'm just scrolling through. I have a profile I created for myself when I was working for another company. I now have my own business. Can I just add my business page? Yes. You don't need to create again, a brand new profile, right? You can't have more than one. So you can still, um, put your, keep your experience on there, even if it's not related to what you do, because, you know, you don't want to have these gaps. Like you didn't just start life the day you started your business, right? You had jobs unless, you know, if there's a job you don't want people to know about, don't list that job on there, but you should list your work history and what could that potentially, what did that, how'd that lead to your current 
job situation, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Just update it and then you connect your business page to that profile, but no reason to go and start from scratch on that. And then how do you suggest handling two different divisions of a business that address the same general audience? Engineers developing medical device and hospitals buying the final products. Um, yeah, you, so let me see if I understand that. Do you want, you mean should have two different profiles for it or just two different businesses, business pages? You can separate into business pages. You can't separate the profiles, if that makes sense. So if you have a division of the business, maybe, I don't know if it's the same company name and it's this different division. Let's just say it's, you know, um, I'm gonna say, Ac Ac you know, Acme, you know, engineering company, and it could be subdivision A and subdivision B. So that, that could be the two different business pages, if that makes sense, or have it all on one business page. It doesn't matter if they're intermingling. So yeah, I'd have to see specifically what you're talking about on each one of these, but, um, again, only one profile, so share on that what you want to, for people to potentially see, but then you can just share your business page for people, just like you would your Facebook business page where your profile is not as important. But those are where all your connections are, all your work history, all your volunteer history, all of that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, 21st Century Da Vinci is my umbrella corporation. My other businesses fall under that. So, yeah, I mean, if you want to separate it into divisions, again, that would be a business. So it would be 21st century division, a Da Vinci. Um, and then it, it, you can also tie a colon, you know, um, division one and colon division two and what, the, what they're called, division of. Yeah, exactly. You can do it that way as well. So as many, I think as many businesses as you want under the one profile. I have two, my two that you saw, two different marketing basically the same thing, just different marketing names on there. That makes sense. Um, I know I'll work with you separately on your hashtags, but generally um, business could, yeah, we'll talk about that <laughs> separately, not going into detail here. Uh, four divisions, yeah, you could do our four companies, that's, that's okay too. You know, as long as they make sense that what their different purposes are, you know, and the different divisions are, that, that's totally fine. It's just the profiles you can't split into four. Um, any other questions? I think I'm just going to scroll back and see if I missed anything. Great questions, everybody. And let's see. I think we're just make sure you save that the the um, save the chat. And actually, I'm going to stop sharing for a second and then I think I can go in and find my links <laughs> for you and, and uh, post them here one second. I'm gonna go back to the front. So don't go away. And I'm gonna find my links and post them in the chat and make it easier, but I'll also make sure that they are on the, um, on, the on the assets that I send you. Okay, so here's mine. You can connect to both pages if you want. One is specific California wine marketing, might not be of interest, but Golden State Marketing in my profile. There you go. Um, put them all there for you guys to click on. Save the chat. Just go to those three little dots on the lower right at the bottom and you can save the chat so you can connect with people. I'm gonna, uh, when I'm done, I'll connect with everybody's LinkedIn pages here uh, or connect with mine. And any other questions? Oh, oh, um, you save it. Uh, yeah, so this should be at the bottom. You should write it like where you type in your message. There's three little dots. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, interesting. It should. Let me see. Uh, let's see, everyone. I'm not sure why. It only says to merge the window. Meet, merge to meeting windows, the no save chat on there. Well, darn it. Um, interesting. Okay, well, I saved it. I What I'll do is I will include the file on, um, yeah, I don't know if you can do a full screen grab on it, maybe if you expand it out. If not, I will include the file on the um, assets page. So you'll be able to download the, um, the chat file on there if you wanna grab off all of the, um, the uh, links on there. So save that. So sorry about that. I don't know why that is, but some might be the way that Score Santa Barbara has their um, 
their webinar set up. So yes, everybody share, share your links. Um, thank you everybody for attending and watch for uh, classes coming up. I'm just gonna look real quick and see, I mentioned my, um, my marketing plan 101. I think this is the last one for SCORE Santa Barbara, but I do have, I don't have the marketing plan 101. I do have uh, July 7th email marketing. I have social media essentials on July 12th. And then a couple uh, coming up in August. I think a few will drop on the calendar as well. And I know marketing plan comes up again soon. So thank you, everybody. I'm going to end it here. Thank you, everybody, for attending. I appreciate um, all of the great questions and comments. And I'm going to make sure I save the chat one more time. You're welcome. You're welcome. And I uh, hope to see you at another class. And watch your um, watch your email box for the link to all of the assets. It'll be a landing page that will have the recording slides and, and calendar and everything for download and the saved chat. I'll make sure you get that as well. So thank you everyone and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.